Praise the Lord. Everybody stands out here, so it looks so funny to stand behind there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a joy to be together this afternoon, and I want also to join uh, Timothy and Rona to welcome you all to this service. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father and King of Glory, we thank you for this afternoon, and thank you, Lord, for the lives of these, your children, that are seated here, Lord. Father, thank you for your love for each of them, and Lord, for the Father that you have brought each one of us. This afternoon, Lord, as we share in your word, my prayer is the King of Kings, you will speak to all of us in a voice that is clear. And I pray that, Lord, you will use me as I share your word with your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As Timothy mentioned, today is Trinity Sunday, and he has already defined what Trinity is. <laughs> he has already defined what Trinity is. One of the things that I try to tell people is that just don't get into the historical explanations of the Trinity, because then you'll get more confused and fail to bring yourself back. But look at the scripture in the way it explains the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God will help you to know that you actually, as a believer, you are an embodiment of the Trinity. So when you think about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you are looking at... Um, God who created the universe, you're created, looking at Jesus Christ who redeemed the world, you are looking at the Holy Spirit who sustains you in your salvation. And I want us to pick this topic at that angle. And the topic we are sharing is the full expression of God's love. The full expression of God's love. And the full expression of God's love can be understood if we understand the power of the creation, if we understand the power of redemption, but also if we understand the enabling power that we can only get through the power of the Holy Spirit. So what is it that God has done in our lives as God the Father from the time of creation? And if we begin from there and then we understand that when I am created, then I need the saving grace of God which comes through Jesus Christ. Then I need the power of the Holy Spirit to enable me to, to bring the conviction of sin so that I can be able to walk this life as a child of God, then you understand clearly what the Trinity is. Because there is no way you can be separated from the other. And when you read here in chapter 1 of John, he says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And what does he talk about the word here, Logos? He's talking about Jesus, who is the word, who was there at the beginning. Last Sunday, when we were talking about the Pentecost, we were talking about the Holy Spirit, who was hovering on the waters during the time of creation. So in creation, you find God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit at work together. And so when you want to understand this, get back to yourself and ask yourself, who created me? And when you understand who the creator is in your life and what the creator, what the creator has done to you, then you'll be able to understand the work of God in your life. Friends, for each one of us to appreciate God for who he is, we have to appreciate him in the way that you cannot do much about yourself because God is the one who created you and he has all that he has to do with your life. There is no way that you can be able to create yourself and make yourself the way you are except with God. And the Bible acknowledges that, that in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Mm. And so in the beginning, the creation story begins with God. And it begins at the point that God is creating, and whatever he created, he said, behold, it was very good. 
he created and everything was very good. And so creating humanity and realizing that humanity was very good, time comes when the human being begins to go away from the presence of God. And it begins with Adam. Remember that Adam is being created and there's no other person. Uh, it, it's like God is doing his work of creating a human being and he begins with Adam. And when he begins with Adam, I think God knew that this Adam is going to be the real person that is going to honor him because there had never been anything in existence like a human being. But it didn't take too long. That as God comes back to the Garden of Eden, he realizes Adam has already sinned. And Adam is already away. He calls Adam, Adam, where are you? I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked. Adam had already gone away from the presence of God. And that is where we draw this topic to say the full extent of God's love, the full expression of God's love is in the Trinity. Because at that moment, God begins to show his love to his people. And he begins by calling Adam back to himself. Much as Adam suffers the punishment that we see in chapter 3, God shows his love by dressing up Adam. Yes, you feel you're naked, but I still love you and I can dress you up. God starts at that point and begins to walk with the people and the time of Noah comes. When the time of Noah comes, you realize that people sinned again and again and God wanted to destroy the whole world. But looking around, he realized there was one man who had remained who had not sinned against him. And God, by his mercy and his love, um, instructs Noah to make the ark so that when the time of destruction comes, Noah is going to be saved. That is the expression of the love of God for humanity. That in the midst of the sinful world, in the sin, midst of the sinful created order, there is always someone who is walking with the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so in the midst of what you see out there, there is someone that God is spotting out and is saying, you are walking right with God. Three weeks ago, I was in California and I met a, I met a younger lady who was a member of this congregation among the youth. And I told her that when I go back, I'm going to tell the youth that I was really excited that you have kept the testimony. This younger lady is living in a very crazy generation. But this young lady is serving in the church. And she's fully involved in the business of the church with all the craziness of America. This young lady is standing. And I told her when I go back home, I will tell the youth that you can stand even when the situation is bad. But she's such a, a living testimony. I, there were about three girls, and I really, really applauded them for standing strong and keeping serving the Lord, even when the serving of the Lord is even difficult, but they try as much as possible to look for ministry. And they look out for ministry, and they have kept themselves, and they know their salvation and their God. When you understand the God who created you, when you understand that God is my creator, irrespective of the challenges, irrespective of the circumstances, you are going to be counted. And the Lord will always look at you and know that somewhere I have mine, I have my own. And so the creator God continues with his act of love. He saves Noah in such a generation. But humanity continues to sin and we see the Tower of Babel. And in the Tower of Babel, you see people trying to reach where God is. And they couldn't reach where God is and God confuses their language and confuses whatever that they were trying to do. And friends, as you walk through the prophets, you realize that God is working out his purposes. God is not destroying people because of idolatry. Many are destroyed, but others are spotted out. And people continue to remain in the system as God continues to work out his redemptive purposes among the people. It was until God 
decided to say, no, I think enough is enough. And that is where we get to the book of Malachi. After the book of Malachi, there was a, go, a great many years, like 400 years of silence before another message came in, and that was the birth of Christ. But this is also a situation where God is reminding the children of Israel that they would have been destroyed, but he still has to choose out those that are standing. That's what he says in chapter 4, verse 4. <clears throat> he says, remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send a prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I'll come and strike the land with total destruction. God is still following up the children of Israel, and he's telling them, actually, I'm not going to destroy you. I still love you, and I'm going to send the prophet Elijah to you before the dreadful day, which means I do not want to destroy my creation. I'm still going to send Elijah to come, and he will be able to speak to you. So, dear friends, when you think about the creator God, who created the universe. He is a God of love. And he continues the trend of loving his people, reminding them that I will not destroy you. Because the Bible says in verse 4, in him was life and the life was the light of men. You can never separate the light which comes through God and Jesus Christ as the light is himself. And so this light shines and continues to shine. And God continued to shine in the midst of the darker lives of the, of the Jews until the time when Jesus is born. And when you read verse 14 of chapter 1, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. When sin has escalated, God revealed himself now in Jesus Christ. God the Redeemer. He comes in the person of Jesus Christ. And friends, his redeeming love is still available in the midst of us until today. The Redeemer is still at work irrespective of what, what has happened, irrespective of, full of the things that have been, uh, that surround us, the Redeemer is present. And so God reveals himself with his redeeming love. And he says that the word now becomes flesh and dwells amongst us. And what is this dwelling among us? Jesus comes and appears, and Jesus is coming into the world. He comes with one purpose, to save the world from sin. And when he comes to save the world from sin, he comes, God is coming now to show himself, to say, yes, I have been talking to you, you've heard my voice, but now I want to interface with my people. That is the grace of God and the love of God that he's extending to his people. The incarnation, he's now coming to reveal himself before his people. And he comes in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus lives, Jesus dies on the cross, he's rejected by sinners. But at the end of the day, at the cross, he forgives all. And he says, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. He also says, it is finished, which means I have done my work of saving and redeeming the world. And friends, until today, with the blood of Jesus that cleanses and washes us, is still available. But what are those consequences that come in a brokenness, when we realize that we do not have acknowledgement of God as the creator, who has created us. And then we deny to have Jesus saving grace into our lives. There are consequences that have come simply because we have not accepted to embrace this Jesus as our Lord and Savior in our lives. And that is why we have the broken world in which we see many things happening today. Friends, today, when you look at the wickedness of the world, sometimes you wonder where the world is going and what is going to happen. 
You realize that there are places today where you cannot get a job. Why? Because you are very saved. And someone will tell you, I can't give you this job because you are very saved. And therefore, we live in a compromising world where you have the qualification, but then you are not very saved, and therefore, your life is compromised, and you can't get that job until you accept to compromise your standard and your life in that place of work. And that is something which is happening. The world today... Friends, you look at the younger people who are involved in murder cases. I've been watching the videos of the younger people with a very, very serious skill of murder. And then you wonder and say, what about in 10 years to come, if these young people are going to leave, they will be experienced serial killers. They are living among us. And the Lord is sending us to them so that the redeeming work of Christ can be experienced in their lives. And that is the only way they can be able to detach themselves from what is going on in their lives. As younger people, as we see what is happening in the world, recently as I was sharing with the youth um, uh, in California, I, I was trying to study around some of the things that are happening around. And one of the things that shocked me was about the puberty blockers. And puberty blockers is something, it's a drug that has been in the circulation for many years. But what is it being used today? Today it is being injected in younger people um, who, so that their puberty is delayed. And when their puberty is delayed, then they can be able to decide which type of gender they want to be. And so many of them have gone through that and it is something that you accept to go through in school and after going through it, then your puberty is delayed a bit, then you can choose whether you want to go through the process of transgender. And many young people are going through that and at the end of the day, they are ending up with the mental health, they are ending up with frustration, they are ending up with suicide because they have been given these puberty blockers. If the lady is going to grow breast, then it is delayed a bit so that you can be able to make a decision whether you want those breasts to grow or not to grow, whether you want to be a lady or you want to be a gentleman. So this is coming simply because there is a brokenness. We have failed to acknowledge the God who has created us. We have failed to acknowledge that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. We have failed to understand that by the time God made you, he actually knew that you were male or you were female. You don't have to take time to think about it. And for many parents today, because I'm talking to parents, younger parents and upcoming parents. For many parents today, thanks be to God, we have the children in charge. But for many parents today, they are being encouraged to let the children, actually not to go to the children in charge, so that when they grow up, they can also decide which religion they want to follow. And the challenge is that we are getting people who are just shocked we, we get testimonies of younger people here after, after the confirmation classes when we are doing the, the final confirmation class and we ask them, what is new that the Lord has told you today? And they will tell you, I am so glad that I now know that God exists. And we thank the Lord that they are able to know that actually... God exists because before they came to the confirmation class, they had been brainwashed not to know that God exists. So when you are talking about the Trinity, you have to be very clear. We have a clear understanding that God is the creator of the universe. You do not have the capacity to create yourself. You do not have the capacity to do anything about yourself. But God has made you the way he has made you for a reason and for a purpose. Over time in schools, you find the people who have really felt they, they, they are, their friends have made them to lose their self-esteem because of their figure, because of the way they look. And one encouragement I give them is that the only psalm that you can go to and read and read again is Psalm 139. You read it and you know that you have a purpose in the hands of God. 
And many times we have lost the purpose because we do not understand why God created us. I like Ricky Warren when he says that each one of us has been created for purpose. You are not an accident. How many of us can even be told that actually you are an accident? But none of us is an accident. We are created in the image of God. It does not matter how you look like. God created you for reason and for purpose. And that purpose is fulfilled in you as you walk this journey. And then you are find yourself in the saving grace of God. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then you begin to truly understand who you are. And if you walk in that faith, then you truly understand that truly God saved me, God created me, and God loves me, and he loves me for a purpose. So I want us to, to, to really, as, as we look at the Trinity, we cannot forget to look at the purpose in the creation, to look at the purpose in the redemption where Jesus is revealed and God comes in the, in the form of a man. We are not going to forget to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus told his disciples that I am going, but I'm not going to leave you as Offense. I am going to send a counselor, a comforter, a teacher. Because if you are saved, if you are a believer, you've now understood your purpose in creation, God the Father. You've now understood your purpose in redemption, God the Son. And you've acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You need to understand your purpose in the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the ongoing work in, the, in your life is that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He teaches you the word of God. He teaches you to understand what your purpose is. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. When you are in Christ, you need the comforting role of the Holy Spirit in your life so that when you feel so scattered in life, when you feel so devastated at work, when you feel so broken because you have been on the street looking for a job for so long, when you feel broken down because of a broken relationship, you can go back and say, Holy Spirit, give me the grace that I need. You can go back and sit at the feet of the Holy Spirit and say, God, help me to know my way. Channel my, my, my thoughts. Redeem me. And I want to assure you the Holy Spirit will come into your life. The Holy Spirit will work in you. The Holy Spirit will change your destiny. Of recent, of course, as you go through, um, as you look at many many messages and what is happening around. Younger people are committing suicide. Younger people are, are, are sitting. I, I have visited several homes and you find this young person is in the bedroom and for a whole year they have never left the bedroom. They are just there. And they can't talk, they can't do anything, totally depressed, losing weight and all that. And you wonder what is it that went wrong? When we come to a point of hating ourselves and feeling that I am not myself, I can't feel myself, and that is what some people say, I can't feel myself. And because you can't feel yourself, you end up hiding yourself in a particular room. You are not eating, you are not talking, you are not doing anything, but you are by yourself and you are hiding yourself and you, you do not know even what to do with yourself. The lack of understanding that actually the creator God who created you understands you. The redeemer God in Jesus Christ has brought salvation which is available for you. The Holy Spirit who is your teacher and your director is available to carry you. And the embodiment of the Trinity in your life is going to help you to know the direction to take. And so I want to encourage us. You cannot have one part of the Trinity in you and be full. I worked at Uganda Christian University for almost 20 years. And the theme for Uganda Christian University is a complete person, for a, a complete education for a complete person. And I think for me it is one of the things 
that encouraged the ministry that I was doing there by then. Why? Because this complete education for a complete person is education of the mind, education of the heart, and education of the hands. So that by the time you graduate as a student from Uganda Christian University, your mind is sharp because you have been academically fed, your heart is rich because you have been spiritually enriched, and your hands are ready to work. And so you cannot separate your mind from your hands, and you cannot separate your mind from your heart. It all has to work together. And when it all works together, then you're a complete person who has had a complete education. So for you to be a complete Christian, you must have the acknowledgement of God, the creator, who created you, who made you who you are, who made you the kind of person you are, you must have the acknowledgement of Jesus Christ who has redeemed you, God the, who brings the salvation to you. You must the, have the acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit who enables you to walk the journey of salvation. And that summarizes for us what the Trinity is. There are so many ways in looking at the Trinity. But I was thinking about, I thought that if we can be able to pick those three parts and understand that these three parts of the Trinity are interconnected. And the interconnectedness of the Trinity helps us to know the direction that we are supposed to take as children of God. You cannot understand God when you do not understand the saving grace of God. You cannot understand the saving grace of God when you do not understand the role of the Holy Spirit in your life as a believer. Because the three work together and they are interconnected. When you talk about the love of God, the saving grace that God has loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross, you cannot skip the reality that the God who created you is the same God who is sending Jesus Christ to die for you on the cross. You cannot disconnect the three from the other. And so God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are intertwined, and God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together. I like what Jesus said in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 10 says, Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. There is no way you can separate because Jesus is saying the reason why I'm here is to do the will of the Father. Friends, I can bring this together and say the reason why you exist is to do the will of God. The reason why you exist is to do the will of God. The question is, are you doing the will of God? For you to do the will of God, there has to be the acknowledgement right from who created you. None of us can be able to create anything. None of us can think about, you know, my head should have been like this, but now God made it like this. That is how God made it, and that is who you are. And just need to say thank you, God, for making me, me. I appreciate myself for what you made me to be, and I'm glad that this is me. And so you continue to ask God, now you created me, the real me, continue to use me in your vineyard, and I'm going to serve you the way I am because you have created me. The Trinity season is a season of service. It is a season where we practically now spread out. The Trinity season has 23, 21 to 23 Sundays. And the Trinity season is a season of ministry. It is the longest season in the church year calendar. And it is a season of ministry. Why? It is a practical season where a Christian has to embody the three persons of the Trinity and be supported by the three persons of the Trinity to step out and do ministry. It's where you understand that you can't do without the other. 
And so I pray that God will usher us into ministry in this season as we begin. It is a long season and the color for this season is green which simply symbolizes new life. So that we are in this new life being ushered into ministry. The very, every Christian who has the embodiment of the Trinity is supposed to get out and be able to serve the Lord. I thank my sister who was sharing about the opening to do ministry at your place of work. That is why you are who you are. Yesterday, the other day I was on an interview and someone was asking me, what do you say about people who are not ordained and they want to serve the Lord? I said that the ordination is actually for a few, but service for the Lord is for all of us. Because not all of us are called for ordination. You know, many people come and say, you know, I feel the calling for ordination. Not all of you are called for ordination. Ordination is called for a few people. Because you can come to ordination and get so frustrated and fail to serve the Lord. But when the Lord has called you the way you are, get equipped, get empowered, and go out and serve the Lord the way you are. God has blessed you in that particular office. God has blessed you in that particular business. God has blessed you in that particular family that you can be an instrument for his glory. And so what is this trinity? The trinity is we look at the creator God who created you. We look at the redeeming God in Christ Jesus who was born in flesh and we look at the power and the working of the Holy Spirit who enables us and sends us out for service. And so the Trinity season ushers us out into service. And so my prayer is my dear brother, my dear sister, you're going to be enabled to serve. But you cannot serve when you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of us end at the point of creation. Listen to what the Bible says in verse 11, chapter 1. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Serving the Lord, you must be a child of God. And becoming a child of God begins at a point when you open your heart to say, Jesus I am available. I have been struggling with A, B, C, D of my life, but now I come to you. I come the way I am because I want to be your child. And you and me can be a child because God's love is open to all of us. I always say that there is no dustbin of a sinner. When we talk about the full expression of God's love, we mean that God has loved even those that are not supposed to be loved, but God loves them. To this day, in whichever condition you are, in whichever state you are, whichever way you are thinking about yourself, God loves you and God cares about you. And the reason why you are not dead until this day and yet you are not saved, the reason is that God loves you. And he still wants you to hear the gospel that you can give your life to him as your Lord and personal Savior. And I want to encourage us, you're here, and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to encourage you that you can make that decision now, and we can pray together with you, so that you embrace Jesus. You begin to appreciate him and acknowledge him for who he is, for what he has done in your life, and for what he has made you to do. You could have been going through a series of challenges. You are frustrated. But I want to assure you that God is able to pick you at the point of your frustration and make you a usable vessel for his kingdom. Let us bow our heads in prayer. I just want us to think about our own relationship with Jesus Christ. There are moments when you know Jesus, but time comes along the way when you begin to doubt whether you actually still believe in Jesus. The Trinity helps us to affirm that our creator God continues to love us endlessly, no matter what the situation. We are reminded that God paid, Christ paid the price for us. He died on the cross to buy you. He purchased you. He ransomed you. When nobody could redeem you, Christ was able to redeem you. And the Holy Spirit is ready to empower you 
with the, with, the, with the fruit of the Spirit so that you can be able to serve him better. And I want to ask if there is anyone, you are here and you do not know Jesus Christ personal as Lord and Savior, and you do want to encounter Christ today, just put up your hand and we are going to pray with you. Just put up your hand and we'll pray with you. You're here and you do not know Jesus personal as your Lord and Savior. And you'd love to begin this journey with Jesus. Heavenly Father and King of Glory, we worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you revealed in your, yourself as three persons in one. You revealed yourself as the creator. You revealed yourself as a redeemer. And you revealed yourself as the Holy Spirit, who is the enabler, the sustainer, the one who sanctifies us, the one who teaches us, and the one who corrects us. We surrender ourselves to you and we pray that, Lord Jesus Christ, you'll make us now useful vessels for your kingdom. You have entrusted us with this ministry. And my prayer is that during this Trinity season, Lord, you will usher us into service and we'll serve you, Lord, without turning back. We give you praise, glory, and honor, for in Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen, and God bless you.